Hello, good afternoon. I'm Warren Hill from uh, Mesa, Arizona, and I'm here today to share with you some thoughts about um, optical biometry using the Hogstride LensStar LS900. This is uh, what I consider to be an amazing addition to the toolbox that we have for intraocular lens power calculations. And let me just share with you some of the points that I like about this instrument. First of all, with a single click of a button, it does multiple simultaneous measurements. And this includes axial length, central corneal power by autokeratometry, anterior chamber depth, lens thickness, horizontal corneal diameter, and the pupil diameter. Uh, it gives accurate and consistent uh, dual zone autokeratometry which is a combination of a 1.65 and 2.3 millimeter zone. And this is probably one of the most interesting features about this instrument, something that is accurate in some ways that has some new utility that we hadn't uh, planned on. And um, I'll share with you some uh, thoughts about that. The anterior chamber depth and lens thickness are by optical biometry. And this is very important for some of the newer um, and more accurate formulas, such as Haggis, uh, Holiday 2, and Dr. Olson's uh, FACO optics formula. The measurements uh, can uh, have a new degree of flexibility. Uh, each measurement can be operator validated uh, and adjusted. And again, very, very important to make sure that the measurements that you have are correct. And as we all know, a measurement's only as good as our ability to understand what it means. Um, one feature that I like very much is that the measuring head and the computer are separate. And this makes it possible to add standalone software uh, to the instrument, such as the Holiday Iowa Consultant. And there have been bridges written between the iSuite software of the LensStar and other programs, such as the Holiday Iowa Consultant and Dr. Olson's FACO Optics program, which means that the two programs can talk together and auto populate. This is kind of a busy slide. It shows basically how much is information is collected uh, with a single uh, touch of the button. We take five measurements and um, it does the average of uh, five uh, measurements uh, total, and this is what you get. So you can see there's a huge amount of information um, generated. This is just a, a summary screen for that. Now, getting into actually how the measurements are done, this is, as we all know, what a traditional immersion A scan looks like, and we see spikes for the anterior cornea, the posterior cornea, uh, the anterior lens capsule, posterior lens capsule, and the vitreoretinal retinal interface. And um, what Hogstrite has done is sort of copied this as a presentation of what the axial length measurement looks like so that you can go in and adjust the measurement gates in pretty much the same way as you would do with an immersion A-scan. This is what the axial length display looks like for the, um, the lens star. And here we have the anterior cornea and posterior corneal spikes, for lack of a better word. Uh, the aqueous depth, and of course, if we add the central corneal thickness Together with the aqueous depth, we get what we know as the anterior chamber depth. Um, lens thickness uh, shows the anterior lens capsule and posterior lens capsule, and also some of the anatomy in between. And then we have the vitreous cavity, and then two spikes on the retina. One is the vitreoretinal retinal interface, or the internal limiting membrane, and the other is the pigment epithelium. Put it all together, and that gives us the axial length. And as you can see at the bottom, we have five measurements and then we use the information from all five measurements to give us a final value uh, with a standard deviation lifted. So this is uh, what a typical axial length display uh, looks like. And uh, you can see, again, the, the cornea, the uh, anatomy of the lens, uh, and the retina, and internal reflectivity within the um, uh, crystalline lens. And the machine has enough flexibility so you can actually go to just a single measurement and take a look at how that is. And perhaps if two or, or one of the measurements are not what you want, you can only include those measurements that you f uh, feel fulfill uh, proper validation criteria. As I mentioned, you can um, edit each of the measurements. In, in, and in another way in which you can edit the measurement is you can uh, place the electronic calipers um, in the correct position if you feel they're not right. And here, for this case, we've taken and we placed the electronic calipers at the position of the anterior lens capsule and also the posterior lens capsule. And uh, this is just the location of the anterior lens capsule. So once again, the operator has access to viewing all the measurements, validating them for being correct, and also adjusting the um, electronic calipers. Now this is one part of the instrument that I think is, uh, is really quite amazing and represents a, a technological uh, breakthrough in, in terms of axial length measurement by optical biometry. 
This is a, a close-up uh, view of the crystalline lens. And what you see here is the anterior lens capsule. And that's, that's not uh, very bad, uh, not too bad rather, considering the fact that you, this is a structure that's maybe you know, 12 or 15 microns thick and is, is fundamentally clear. We have some internal anatomy of the lens. Here are the cortex nucleus interface, uh, multiple internal reflections within the lens, the nucleus cortex interface on the posterior um, uh, side of the, of the nucleus, and then the posterior lens capsule. And if you think about all the, the processing that has to go, uh, the instrument has to go through in order to find a structure that's basically clear and about five microns in thickness, this is pretty amazing. So here really we have all the internal anatomy of the crystal lens by optical biometry and the operator has the flexibility to put the electronic calipers wherever they need to be to be exactly in the right position. Put it all together and of course that gives us the lens thickness. Now, um, as you know, the Holiday 2 formula and the Olsen formula require lens thickness information. And in the future, some of the more sophisticated programs will be using uh, lens thickness as an important part of the calculation process. Here's another aspect of the machine that we just kind of stumbled upon, which I think is going to be very helpful. Uh, let's say that you do cataract surgery on someone and you get a three and a half diopter surprise, just something completely out of the blue. Well, you can take the instrument to actually measure pseudophagic lens thickness. So not only can you measure the position of the crystal lens, but you can also measure its thickness. And in our practice, um, we've just been measuring a number of pseudophagic patients and came up with this table. And what this table shows us is that an intraocular lens of uh, 0.64 millimeters is a very, very close to a, a 21 diopter lens. And in this case, that's exactly what was implanted. Um, these are not exact sagittal thickness measurements you know, from the manufacturer, but it's easy to generate these sorts of tables, and it's very easy to tell whether or not the correct lens was implanted. If it was a 3.5 diopter error, you'd probably have to be putting in something close to a 26 millimeter lens. So we know for a fact that if we had a refractive surprise, the right lens was implanted, and probably the lens was just closer to the principal plane of the cornea. Here's another way in which the uh, user can adjust uh, the measurements. This is the uh, horizontal corneal diameter. And the uh, reticule that uh, goes around the limbus can be adjusted in terms of both position and size. And here it's been sized and positioned correctly. This particular patient has a very light iris, and sometimes it's difficult to tell the position of the limbus if there isn't much contrast. So these other four are incorrect, and the first one was adjusted by the operator and we know that that's the exact measurement. So this is very, very nice. Once again, just to, to, to repeat, the operator has access to all the measurements and can validate them and can adjust them. As far as the keratometry goes, this is really one of my favorite aspects of the LensStar. Um, it has uh, a combination of a 1.65 and 2.3 millimeter uh, set of zones. And at each one of these zones, it measures 16 points. So that's a total of 32 uh, 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 measurement points. And then every time you hit the button, it's four readings per acquisition of data. Um, in order to complete the measurement process, you do five sets of readings per total examination. So what that gives us is uh, 640 total measurements for your keratometry. Now, if the question comes up a lot, you know, um, how close is this to the IOL master? And can I use lens constants uh, that have been developed for other forms of optical biometry? In our office, we did a prospective study of, uh, of 110 eyes that have been measured both by the lens star and the IOL master at the same visit. And as you can see here, what we, what we found was that autokeratometry, axial length measurement, and the measurement of anterior chamber depth differed in such a small amount that they were clinically insignificant. So what does this mean for lens constants? It means that lens constants have been, that have been developed for other forms of optical biometry can be used as a starting point for the lens star. And then, you, of course, the operator would quickly uh, do individual optimization. Uh, but this is a pretty good starting point, and I think it'll work uh, quite well for you. What about eyes that have had prior um, post-myopic LASIK? Uh, there are a number of calculation methodologies available, and most of them use um, either topography or or IOL master K readings. 
In our practice, we did um, a study with 100 consecutive postmyopic LASIK eyes, and we found that the difference between the lens star and the eye master was less than one tenth of a diopter. So what this means is that it's possible to use the ASCRS calculator for postmyopic LASIK calculations. And some of the more accurate methodologies require small zone autokeratometry. So again, until other methodologies have been developed specifically for the lens star, the ASCRS online post refractive surgery calculator can be used with confidence with this instrument. Now, the accuracy of keratometry is also important for the toric intraocular lens. And this is a keratometry database from my practice of approximately 6,000 patients. And the first thing that stands out is that astigmatism for people mostly of northern European ancestry um, has a peak at about uh, one half to 0.75 uh, diopters. The high astigmats are the people that we remember, but um, the actual large numbers of uh, astigmatism patients we see have low values. And at relatively low values, it's hard to get a really accurate uh, steep axis. So the more accurate the keratometry, the better the outcomes will be for the toric eye well. Um, we've just finished a retrospective study of four clinical uh, sites, uh, Dr. Bob Yosher, Dr. Kerry Solomon, uh, David Cook, and myself. And what this study showed was that there was a very, very good correlation between manual keratometry, which was the original um, uh, astigmatism measurement method recommended by the manufacturer, and the uh, LENSTAR uh, optical biometer. So when proper validation criteria are applied, LENSTAR Ks can be used with the Alcon Acrosoft calculator for the Alcon toric intraocular lens. And this is now what we're doing in our practice, and we've been very, very happy with the results. The validation criteria that we've come up with is that for the power in each meridian, the standard deviation needs to be equal to or less than 0.2 diopters, and for the axis in each meridian, it needs to be 3.5 degrees or less. So in this case, um, we would have uh, a standard deviation of 0.18 diopters, which would be valid, and uh, a standard deviation for the axis of 1.6 degrees. Over here on the second measurement for the left eye, that would be valid for the first K, valid for the second K, but you can see that the um, axis measurement would not be valid. We want to go back for the left eye and repeat those measurements. Now one of the other uh, features that I like very much about this instrument is that the measurement head and the computer are separate, which means that we can add standalone software such as the Holiday Eye Well Consultant. So you take your measurements with the LENSTAR, you can open up the Holiday Eye Well Consultant, and in this case it talks about uh, one of the options is you have uh, measurements within the last seven days. All you have to do is simply uh, click on uh, LENSTAR and it will import all of the measurements from the LENSTAR within the last seven days into the database of the Holiday Eye Well Consultant. You can go ahead and um, you know, bring up your preoperative measurement screen and each of these little red circles indicates the, the wealth of information that's automatically imported into the Holiday Eye Well Consultant software. This not only saves your staff a tremendous amount of time, but also eliminates the issue of um, data entry errors. So you'll click on Eye Well Calculations and you're good to go for the calculations. Now, because this instrument is relatively new, um, most people are gonna need to do uh, some form of lens constant optimization. Uh, for the last eight years, my office has uh, had a free service where you can download a spreadsheet from my website, fill it out with 250 cases, send it to me as an email attachment, and for free we'll go ahead and optimize for the uh, basic two variable third generation formulas such as Holiday 1, SRKT, and Hoffer Q, and also for the Haggis formula. And then with that you'll get a report showing the Haggis constants that have been optimized for your practice as well as those, as I mentioned, for Holiday 1, Hoffer Q, and SRKT, as well as a report as to where you stand in relation to the rest of the ophthalmic community in terms of accuracy.